In this lesson, we'll take a look at solving trigonometric equations. And in example one, and there's a uh, C and D on the next two pages as well, we're asked to solve on the interval, the closed interval, 0 to 2 pi, which means we include 0 and 2 pi, and we search everywhere in between as well to look for solutions in here. And if you haven't seen this unit circle before, these are rotations in radians. We're only going to solve this in radians, not degrees. And the ordered pairs here, this is called a unit circle because the uh, radius is one unit. If you rotate from 1, 0 up to here, that's a rotation of pi over 6. And the x-coordinate is the cosine of pi over 6, so it's root 3 over 2. And the uh, y-coordinate, the half, is the sine of pi over 6. So, for example, if we rotate over to 2 pi over 3, the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative a half. The sine is root 3 over 2. And in the A example, we're given sine theta plus 1 half times sine theta minus root 3 over 2 equals 0. Now there's a, an applied multiplication here if you don't see it. The only way that this quantity multiplied by this quantity equals 0 is if either the sine theta plus a half equals 0 or the sine theta minus root 3 over 2 equals 0. It's the only way you can get two things to multiply to 0. And so we start solving for rearranging and solving for sine theta. So I would subtract a half from both sides and get sine theta equals negative a half. And do the same thing over here. I'd add root 3 over 2 to both sides. So we get sine theta equals root 3 over 2. Now we're going to look on the unit circle. Where is the sine negative a half? Remember the sine is the y-coordinate. Uh, notice that the y-coordinates are all positive in the first and second quadrant. Sine is negative in the third and fourth, and that's one of the reasons why sine is negative. So the sine is negative a half here at 7 pi over 6, and then reflecting across the y-axis, there's another place at 11 pi over 6 that the sine is negative a half. So we list those two angles, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, as solutions. Where is the sine root 3 over 2? Uh, it's positive. Positive root 3 over 2 here at pi over 3, and then directly across the y-axis at 2 pi over 3, there's another place the sine is root 3 over 2. So we'd list those two solutions as well. So there actually are four solutions for this trigonometric equation. In the second example, we're given 2 sine squared x minus sine x equals 0. It's not in a factored form like this one was. We need to factor it first. And notice that there's a common factor of sine x in both parts here. So I would factor a sine x out of both parts. So factoring a sine x out of 2 sine squared x, which means I'm dividing 2 sine squared x by sine x, which gives me 2 sine x. Remember, you can check and go backwards. Uh, 2 sine x times sine x is 2 sine squared x. Factoring a sine x out of a negative 1 sine x gives me negative 1. Now I have it in a factored form. And I'm going to set each of these factors to 0. So I'm setting sine x to 0, and then the 2 sine x minus 1 as well. Now, this is already rearranged for sine x. This one is not yet. So I would take this, and I would add 1 to both sides to start getting the sine x alone. So that would give us 2 sine x equals 1, and I'd divide out the 2. So we would get sine x equals a half. Now, let's look over here. Where is the sine 0? Where is the y-coordinate 0? It's 0 right here. And then if you don't rotate off the x-axis at all from the 1, 0 point, that's actually a rotation of 0. 2 pi, notice there's a 2 pi here. That means you rotate all the way around to that point. So a rotation of 0 radians and 2 pi radians takes you to exactly the same spot. Now, halfway in between there, over at pi, there's another place that the sine is 0. The sine of pi is 0 as well. So 0 pi and 2 pi are all solutions to sine x equals 0. Where is the sine a half? Well, there's a place that the sine is a half at pi over 6, and then directly across the y-axis at this point here, which is a rotation of 5 pi over 6, is another place. So we'd list those two as well. So there actually are five solutions for this trigonometric equation. In example C, we're asked to solve 2 cos squared x minus cos x minus 1 equals 0. And this is another quadratic type equation, but it does not have a common factor like B did. Now, this is very similar to factoring 2x squared minus 1x minus 1 equals 0. Same kind of factoring. And the method I'm going to employ is we're going to find two numbers that add to negative 1, negative 1 being the coefficient of the, uh, the negative cos x term in the middle here, and that multiply the product of 2 and negative 1, this 2 and this negative 1, which, of course, is negative 2. And the numbers that add to negative 1 and multiply negative 2 are negative 2 and 1. And so what I'm going to do with those negative 2 and 1 is I'm going to rewrite my equation. First term's the same. Last term's the same, the negative 1. But instead of negative cos x in the middle, I'm going to use these to break it down to negative 2 cos x. There's the negative 2. And then plus 1 cos x. Notice that negative 2 cos x and 1 cos x do add to negative cos x. 
And notice that there's a common factor of 2 cosine x in the first two terms. So if we factor a 2 cos x out of 2 cos squared x, we'll get cos x. And if we factor a 2 cos x out of negative 2 cos x, we get negative 1. There's only a common factor of 1 in the last two terms, so I actually am common factoring, but it's a very simple common factor. We don't normally put the 1 here. You can if you want, but uh, there is actually a 1 there. Notice what's in the two brackets are the same, so we can factor a cos x minus 1 out of both parts. And if the cos x minus 1 is gone, what's left for the other factor is 2 cos x, right there, plus the 1. Now we have it in the factored form, and we'll set each of these factors to 0. Now, this one we want to rearrange for cos x, so I would add 1 to both sides and get cos x equals 1. And this one here, I would uh, subtract 1 from both sides to start solving for cos x, and then divide out this 2, so we would get cos x equals negative a half. Now, where is the cosine 1? Well, the cosine is 1 here at 0 and, of course, also at 2 pi. That's the only place the cosine is 1. If you look through all the x coordinates, actually it's negative 1 there, but back to here, it's the only place. So a rotation of 0 and 2 pi are solutions for this equation. Where's the cosine negative a half? Where's the x-coordinate negative? Well, notice the x-coordinate's positive in first and fourth quadrant. Cosine's negative over here in the second and third. It's negative a half there at 2 pi over 3, and then reflecting in the x-axis straight down, there's another place where cosine's negative a half at an angle of 4 pi over 3. So there's our other two solutions. In example D, we're asked to solve 3 cosecant squared x plus 7 cosecant x plus 2 equals 0. And this is similar to example D, sorry, C. We're going to solve this, uh, first of all, do the factoring by finding two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to the product of 3 and 2, which, of course, is 6. And the numbers that uh, add to 7 multiply to 6 are 6 and 1. And so with those 6 and 1, we're going to break the 7 cosecant x down into 6 cosecant x and 1 cosecant x, leaving the first term the same and the last term the same. Notice that those two terms add to 7 cosecant x. Notice that there's a common factor in the uh, first two terms of 3 cosecant x. So we take 3 cosecant squared x and divide it by 3 cosecant x, we just get a cosecant x. 6 cosecant x divided by 3 cosecant x is just 2. Notice the cosecants divide out and it's just 6 divided by 3 is a 2. The common factor in the end is uh, just a 1. Uh, there's only a common factor of 1 here, so we would just put brackets around the cosecant x plus 2. Remember, there actually is a 1 here, but you don't normally write it. What's in these two brackets are the same, so we can factor a cosecant x plus 2 out. And what's left then after the cosecant x plus 2 is gone and is factored out of here is 3 cosecant x, right there, plus 1. Now we'd set each of these factors to 0. So we would set cosecant x plus 2 to 0, and the 3 cosecant x plus 1 as well. So we're going to solve for cosecant x. So we would subtract 2 from both sides and get cosecant x equals negative 2. Now, this gives us sines and cosines, but not cosecant. So I'm going to change this into a sine by remembering my one of my reciprocal identities, that cosecant is same as 1 over sine. So 1 over sine x equals negative 2. Now, if I rearrange and solve this, actually just by taking the reciprocal of both sides, uh, if 1 over sine x equals negative 2, then sine x equals negative a half. Negative a half, again, being the reciprocal of 2. It's like I took both sides and flipped them upside down. That's what taking the reciprocal means. The reciprocal of negative a half, negative 2, is negative a half. This actually has the denominator of 1. That's why. Now, on the unit circle, where is the sine negative a half? Well, the signs are positive up here, so we're looking down in these two quadrants. So the sine is negative a half here at 7 pi over 6 and over here at 11 pi over 6. Now we're going to add 1 to both sides to solve for cosecant x here. And then divide out the 3. So we get cosecant is equal to negative a third. Now once again, uh, I'm using my reciprocal identity. If cosecant x is negative a third, the reciprocal of both sides, the reciprocal of cosecant x is sine x, and the reciprocal of negative a third is negative 3. Again, flipping it upside down. Now, the sine is, is never below negative 1. Okay? Sine is always between negative 1 and positive 1. So there is no solution to this. You cannot find a negative 3 on here.